All right, welcome back to the New Equity Network show. Michael Yorba, your host, and Ed Baxter, the co-host. Uh, on this uh, segment, we've got Andrew Whalen, CEO, Bioelectronics Corporation, and uh, they've got uh, remarkable breakthroughs on uh, pain relief. And I, I personally have seen these devices work. They actually work effectively, so effectively that people don't need drugs anymore when it comes to pain relief. So, I mean, that's a personal testimonial. Andrew, welcome, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for the opportunity and the testimonial. Oh, my pleasure. No, it works. I saw, I've seen it. it you know, you, you the, uh, I, I know that, uh, um, and I'll go into that just for a second. I know somebody that had severe back, chronic back pain. They were using codeine, bordering on, on morphine. They got your product, and they don't have to use drugs anymore to uh, uh, relieve the pain. Just thanks for, for your contribution to mankind. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Let, tell us a little bit about yourself, if we can, so for, for the audience, so they can get a, f- a f- flavor for the man who is, is driving the ship, and then let's get into your products. Well, I've been at this for a, a good number of years. I actually started the company back operation in 2003, um, and we, we have limited U.S. FDA clearance, but uh, we have very broad clearances around the world. And over the years, what we've been able to develop is a real jewel in terms of our product and the product platform. Essentially, the market is that, as you mentioned, chronic pain. Chronic pain is a distinct, unmet need. In the somewhere around, depending on how you're measuring the market, 20 to 30 percent of the population suffer from chronic pain. That means in the world there's 1.5 billion people suffering in pain, in chronic pain. In the U.S. alone, there's 116 million people in chronic pain. That chronic pain means they can't sleep at night. You know, the last time I heard from the pain foundation was high impact uh, chronic pain means it's clearly disrupting their lives. They can't go to work. They can't uh, function with the family. They don't go out. They just they, their lives have been basically destroyed by it. And the the, the ob- obvious uh, questions about the size of the market and the potential is that with this forty billion dollars spent on drug therapy, when we go out and survey the patients, we find that eighty percent of them have pain levels that are up, that existing pain levels are 8.2 on a scale of 10, and they're using, for the most part, drugs, but they're using two therapies. So they're using two drugs, or they're using a drug in a combination of a TENS device, heat wrap, you know, topical treatments, physical therapy, and so forth. All this means that, you know, you have to define what chronic pain is. And what we find is that it's 80 to 85 percent of the people that suffer from chronic pain have musculoskeletal pain, and that's precisely what our device does. It reduces the inflammation, which reduces the pain by accelerating the blood flow. And so, uh, the device is really unique. And the device is what I'm really proud about. The device retails for approximately $30. It, has, it lasts 720 hours. It has an on and off switch. So we're talking about $0.04 cents an hour for therapy that's more effective than drug therapy or anything else on the market, which we'll talk about a little later. So we're, at, we're and it's 100% safe. It's drug-free. There are absolutely no side effects on it. It's safe on diabetics, elderly. Uh, arthritics. Uh, so, the, you know, the effectiveness and safety has really become, and what we've established over the years, he, uh, is, is that, that the effectiveness and the safety of the product makes it a very unique product, which makes bioelectronics a very unique opportunity. Definitely. Ed's got a question for you. Sure. Ed, you, something, you brought up something interesting in your comments there with regard to the, the company and its product, with regard to the fact you had limited FDA clearance when it came to usage in the U.S. 
can you kind of speak to uh, why that would be so? Because it seems like this is a non-invasive product. Uh, was there a particular reason why you, you feel like the FDA won't allow it to be a widely used retail type product? Because me, myself, I've had uh, shoulder surgery. I've had both knees operated on. So I'm, I'm familiar with body pain and the different things associated with having played sports. So with that said, talk to us a little bit about maybe the process of getting the product approved for the retail level in the United States and any, any encumbrances that might be a part of that. All right. I think it, to give um, the FDA a reasonable expert defense, if you will, on it and the problem, Pulse shortwave therapy has been around for about 80-plus years now. Its genesis or origin comes from medical diathermy, which was taking the pulse or taking a shortwave signal and putting it into the body to create deep heat. Um, a U.S. doctor, Goldwater, in, in, right after the Second World War, actually, discovered that you could pulse the signal. The purpose then was to preclude the accumulation of heat so you did not burn the patient. The FDA and many other people sat around and said, well, if you're not accumulating heat, what's the mechanism of action? How does it work? Why does it work? And, and so we always had a great deal of skepticism in there. The one FDA clearance we have, ironically, is for the treatment of blepharoplasty, which is eye surgery, uh, which is interesting because, you know, we got them to agree that we can put it over your eye and brain, but you can't put it on your knee. But, what the, what, and I, now, fortunately, we've, as we've been working on solving this and working in the other markets, we have an excellent working relationship with the New York State University uh, Clinical and Research Entity up at uh, Binghamton. And their research with this has defined what's the mechanism of action. How does this thing really work? Because over time, pulse therapy became much more effective than the continuous form. And so the question was, well, you know, what's going on? And what we found is it is the pulsing of the signal, not the heat. And, and what that means is that the, if to a physicist is stochastic resonance, it's that t- constant pounding of the signal. So the signal is going on and, on and off. Fortuitously, we're doing it fast enough that it disrupts the afferent nerves, which we've been able to measure. By disrupting the third afferent nerves, we stimulate a muscle response. It's the muscle response that gets the blood flow increase, which we can measure, and then uh, show that that's what pushes out the edema and relieves the pain. And so the, what the device does, which is really kind of unique, it, it not only reduces pain, it accelerates the healing process because it reduces inflammation. It's about a little later, but essentially in chronic wounds, post-operative surgery, you have, a, you have uh, inflammation, which is keeping the wound open. By putting the device on it, we, do, we get two things done. We shut down the inflammation, which accelerates the healing. You get, you get less scarring. And also, most importantly, it accelerates the healing. So wounds that are stuck like a diabetic ulcer in the uh, inflammatory phase of the first phase of healing, we, go in there, we put the device on, it just boom, and it shuts it down. So now, to get to the FDA clear, we've asked, the FDA has finally agreed over the years that they, as of, it's been a year almost up to the day, that they should have published the new regulations. <clears throat> we've gone back to them and said, hey, guys, we have two things. One, we want to, you know, get to obviously support the reclassification from the class three to the class two. But more importantly, we'll look at our device because it's slightly different. I mean, we're operating at 73 microwatts at the tissue level. We, you know, our power level is 200 to the cell phone in terms of risk. But it's that pulsing. And that's part of what we're testing, again, on, the, on our new devices. What's the optimum pulse rate that the device should work at? Well, based on what you said, I figured you'd probably be looking to find the optimum pulse rate, having been through what I call ultrasound technology from uh, the different types of uh, therapies I've had, from the injuries I've had, 
that's it. You, you essentially answered the question I think a lot of people wanted to hear, so I appreciate you doing that for us. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll get through the FDA here. Uh, hopefully, you know, hope, you know, God willing, this month they'll get, they'll get some clearance as to what the classification will be. And we have all the clinical data and the files ready. I mean, virtually based on what they say, we'll put a postage stamp on it and send it down to them. And Andrew, I, I hate to interrupt, but we've got to go to a commercial break. And on the other side of the break, I want to get to uh, uh, the business side of this. Uh, you know how sales are doing. What's uh, bio? You know what investors should know about bioelectronics and and several more. I'm sure Ed will come up with a thousand questions for you. All right. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be right back on the other side of this break with Andrew Whelan, CEO, Bioelectronics Corporation, symbol B-I-E-L, website, bio, B-I-E-L-C-O-R-P.com. We'll be right back. 